five active steps to build confidence and be yourself. Building confidence is more about belief than ability. After all, a healthy sense of belief in yourself can improve your confidence more than anything else. Honestly, belief and confidence are a lot like the chicken and the egg. They're linked, and it really doesn't matter which comes first because they're both critical for the existence of the other. When we're working to build our confidence, we must believe. In order to believe, we must have confidence that our beliefs are correct. In this presentation, we'll provide you with five steps to build confidence and be yourself. Draft a strong personal belief statement. This can completely change things. Your belief statement needs to concentrate on your beliefs as well as remind you of what you're capable of. You need to feel both good and empowered when you speak your belief statement out loud. Take 10 minutes to jot down some of the challenges you've faced and the themes that keep coming up in your life. Next, take 10 minutes to generate potential belief statements that claim your ability to overcome them. Now, spend 5 to 10 minutes speaking the statements you've written. Finally, Choose the one that evokes positive emotion stroke confidence in you. Once you've established your personal belief statement, memorize it. When you frequently recite your belief statement, you lay the foundation for building long-term confidence. Practice makes perfect. The more you practice confidence, the stronger your confidence will be. You already know of things that you're good at and capable of. This can help boost your confidence, especially when it provides proof that you can do anything. When you accomplish something, it's a chance to practice confidence, and expressing that confidence out loud, whether to yourself or others, can truly transform your whole belief system. Your confidence is like a muscle. It must be strengthened. If you don't use it, you lose it. That is, if you don't strengthen your confidence, you won't stand a chance when faced with disappointment. Invite confident stroke competent people into your life. You reflect your environment and those you spend time with. Therefore, you need to make sure to invite confident stroke competent people into your life. These people will model behaviours that benefit your growth. When you watch others exhibit their confidence, even when faced with challenges, it will strengthen your belief and confidence in yourself. Their presence in your life will prove that you can be confident even when faced with struggles. Plus, it reminds you that you're not alone, which is the best feedback you'll ever find. Track your wins. Your inner critic can get aggressive and loud when self-doubt rears its ugly head. This can end up compounding into an assault on your beliefs, which can make it difficult to build your confidence. Unfortunately, it seems to be easier to remember what went wrong, but not always easy to remember what went right. However, if we keep a record of our wins, we can refer back to them as a reminder of our accomplishments, bravery and capabilities. They will help you reconnect with and exercise your confidence muscle. Trust that there's something greater. This trust allows you to experience a deeper faith which will lead to confidence. When you trust that there's something greater and a reason for everything, you can tap into a sense of acceptance when things go crazy. This will naturally help you anchor your confidence, making it easier to get out of your comfort zone. Conclusion In order to achieve your goals, you need to build your confidence. Unfortunately, many people experience anxiety with this process. What we believe about ourselves will have an effect on our confidence. After all, if you don't believe you can achieve something, then you won't. While this may sound really simple, it's not. If you believe in yourself and that belief is rooted in trust, there's not much that will shake your confidence. These five active steps will help you build confidence and be yourself. Five tasks to help you understand your weirdness. If you really stop and think about it, there's no one that has been successful that is 100% normal. Plus, it takes guts to be weird and use it to your advantage. As a general rule, weirdos are made fun of, ignored, referred to as crazy and are often loners. If you've ever been called weird, don't fret too much over it. The truth is, it's probably a good thing. You must learn to use your uniqueness to your advantage. You need a strong sense of confidence to let your weirdness show because people are mean. They're going to criticise you, make fun of you and even laugh at you. 
In this presentation, we'll take a look at five tasks that can help you understand your weirdness and learn to use it to your advantage. Five tasks to understand and use your weirdness. Don't confuse weird with jerk. The title of weird is not the same thing as being a jerk, therefore don't use it in that way. Be weird, but don't be rude about it. Stand up for your uniqueness. The truth is, it's hard to be weird. Chances are you've learned by now that many people have difficulty accepting anyone who is different than they are. People are going to do whatever they can to make you normal. They may physically beat you up, or they may tease or ignore you until you comply. Sure, being weird is hard sometimes, but if you own it and don't back down no matter what, those in your life will learn to love you for it. Don't shy away or try to hide. Unfortunately, many times, people get into situations and their weird starts to show. And instead of letting it happen, they bury it as quickly as they can before anyone else catches a glimpse of it. The truth is, weird is part of who you are, whether you like it or not. If you attempt to hold it in, you're not being true to who you are, which is the worst thing you can do. You're special because of your weirdness, and if you nurture it, it'll grow and you'll be able to use it to your advantage. Prepare for a different lifestyle. One thing you must keep in mind when you're weird is that your lifestyle is going to be completely different from that of anyone else. You may decide that you want to move into a hut and become a painter. Then again, maybe you want to investigate paranormal activities. Most people are not going to understand you, and the hard part is, some of those people will be those that you love deeply. However, no matter what, you must always be true to who you are. This is your life, and you only get to live it once. You must do whatever makes you happy. It's fine if you need to be selfish and never look back. Stop caring. This is one of the hardest things you'll have to do, and truthfully, no one ever completely masters it. However, the less you care, the more your weirdness will thrive, which means your happiness will increase because you're being true to yourself. Of course, some people change based on their environment. You may have to tone down your weirdness in certain situations, as some people may get overwhelmed with you. Ultimately, you must be true to who you are. Avoid those who don't support you as much as possible. Conclusion if you really think about it, most of the really successful people in the world have a bit of weirdness in their personality. Sure, it takes guts to be weird. As a general rule, weird people are shunned. However, the truth is, you must learn how to understand your weirdness and use it to your advantage. 5 Tips for Getting Comfortable in the Uncomfortable As humans, we believe that stress is a bad word. We do whatever we can possibly do to avoid it. However, the truth is, sometimes stress can be beneficial because it gets us out of our comfort zone, which can launch us into success. One of the worst things you can do to your career, or even to your life, is to remain too long in your comfort zone. Unfortunately, when you don't get uncomfortable, you don't grow. If you don't grow, you get stagnant, which is never a good thing. If you ever want to reach your true potential, you need to experience a bit of stress and discomfort. In this presentation, we'll give you five tips for getting comfortable in the uncomfortable. Remove frustration from your vocabulary. Over the past few years, one of the primary leadership buzzwords has been resiliency, which of course has different meanings for different people. However, for most people, this term means to be as strong as possible by being adaptable when things change and removing the word frustration from your vocabulary. The emotion of frustration is a man-made one that can be eliminated once you understand and acknowledge that every problem does have a solution. As a strong, resilient leader, you must learn to break down the problem into the smallest possible components to find the solution. This will help you become stronger and more resilient and eliminate frustration. Focus on short-term resolutions stroke small wins. The next tip for becoming comfortable with the uncomfortable is to leverage small wins and short-term resolutions. This means that you must be taking each day as it comes, focusing only on what is under your control and then find the places where you can have small wins and only need short-term resolutions. The small wins not only build your own confidence, but can also help to build the confidence of your team. Then, 
As you begin to connect your short-term wins to create long-term wins, your confidence will increase and you'll become more comfortable with the uncomfortable. Follow your intuition. When you're feeling uncertain and uncomfortable, you'll only increase your discomfort if you start to overanalyze and or overthink the situation. One of the best things to do is to trust your own intuition and feel confident that even if you do make a mistake, it'll be easy to fix. Find ways to proactively innovate. When you react to what's going on around you, the chances that you will feel uncomfortable are increased. However, you can take action by evaluating the situation and challenging the situation at hand. When you are the one that is driving the situations in your world instead of reacting to them, you will be much more comfortable with being uncomfortable. One of the ways that you can do this is to find ways that you can innovate the current situation. Unlearn and relearn new things. One of the main reasons why people are uncomfortable as a leader is that they're stuck in their old ways of thinking. When you can unlearn some of these old thought processes, you'll be a lot more comfortable with being uncomfortable. Conclusion As humans, we often do whatever we can to remain in our comfort zone. We don't want to be uncomfortable. However, if you never get uncomfortable, you will never grow, which means you'll be stuck for a very long time. On the other hand, if you can implement some of these five tips for getting comfortable in the uncomfortable, you'll see growth like you've never seen before. Five tips for setting boundaries with people who try to squash your weirdness. You've been told that you have a unique personality and there are some people in your life who have tried to squash that. Unfortunately, you struggle with setting boundaries, but the good news is you're not alone. This is something that a lot of people seem to struggle with. In this tutorial, we'll explain five tips for setting boundaries with those who are trying to stifle your uniqueness. There are two main functions of boundaries. They tell others how you want to be treated, protecting you from being mistreated. They build a healthy separation between you and others, allowing you to have your own space stroke privacy as well as your own ideas, thoughts, feelings and needs. You're free to be yourself instead of simply an extension of someone else or who stroke what someone else wants you to be. If you never experienced clear, consistent boundaries and or expectations when you were growing up, it's probably not natural for you. You may feel like you don't deserve to ask for what you want stroke need. However, you can release these negative beliefs regarding boundaries. The following five tips will help. Be clear. Before you start establishing boundaries, you must be clear about what it is that you want and why that's important to you. This will help you explain what you need and help you maintain your stance when things get tough. If you're trying to establish a difficult boundary, it may be helpful to jot down what it is that you want and why. Some people find that writing out a script and rehearsing it decreases their anxiety. Be direct, stroke, don't apologize. When you communicate your boundaries, it's best to be direct and concise. If you try to explain, justify or apologize for your boundaries, your message isn't as strong. Whatever you do, keep it simple and keep in mind that you have every right to ask for what you want, stroke, need. You don't need a reason. Expect resistance. When you start establishing boundaries, some people will not respond gracefully. This is usually the people that have been benefiting from your lack of boundaries. They don't want you to change. Some of them will use anger to try and manipulate you and get you to change your mind. Others just need some time to adjust to the new you. One of the reasons people don't set boundaries is because they want to avoid conflict or upset anyone. When people don't like the boundaries you're trying to establish, it's easy to revert back to your former passivity. However, even if your boundaries do provoke resistance or anger, you should never not set them. You just need to take steps to protect yourself. When people fight against your boundaries, it only confirms that they're needed. It's an ongoing process. If you've got any experience with children, you know that you've got to set rules repeatedly and be clear with them about what you expect. The same thing needs to be done when setting boundaries with adults. You can't just set it and forget it. You'll likely need to set the same boundary over and over with the same person. Then, as needs change, you may need to establish different boundaries. They are for your well-being. 
you should never use boundaries to control, stroke, punish others. Boundaries should be used as a form of self-face, something you do for your personal well-being. They help you avoid being taken advantage of, being overworked, physical, stroke, emotional abuse or harm, overcommitting yourself or feeling overwhelmed. Conclusion You've got a very unique personality, but unfortunately there are people in your life that will try to squash that. However, you must keep in mind that you matter. Your feelings, dreams, needs and ideas are all important. You can establish parameters of how people are allowed to treat you. These five tips can help you set boundaries with people who try to squash your uniqueness. Five ways to stop looking for approval from other people. We all seek validation and approval from others. It's part of the human condition. This is perfectly acceptable to do occasionally. However, at some point, it becomes habit. And this is when it's time to take a step back and realize that you don't have to have the approval of others to feel good about yourself and your achievements. In this tutorial, we're going to explain five ways that you can stop looking for approval from other people. Why do we seek approval? The truth is, confidence comes from validation. If we don't trust ourselves, we turn to others to find that approval. We trust the opinion of others more than we trust our own. We believe their opinion of us holds greater validity because we don't believe in ourselves or our own perspective. However, there is some good news. You can turn this around and learn to build stronger trust stroke confidence in yourself. Five ways to stop seeking the approval of others. The good news is it's possible to flip the script and learn to build stronger trust and confidence in ourselves. These five tips will help. Replace your inner critic. According to the experts, we are our own worst critic. When we're critical with ourselves, it undermines our confidence. Therefore, when you have these critical thoughts, try to catch them, either by meditating or journaling, and pay attention to how they make you feel. Acknowledge them, but counter them by reminding yourself that you are valuable and capable. Invite nice people into your circle. When you're surrounded by people that don't have your back, we begin to crave validation. People who judge you or ignore your text messages leave you feeling insecure and craving approval. Therefore, you need at least one person in your circle that will hype you up. This can be a friend or mentor or someone that inspires you in some way. You need to hear these voices that remind you that you are important to the world. Check your beliefs. While it's perfectly acceptable to collaborate with others, you don't want to be persuaded by what they say because you may not believe in your own voice. When you check the accuracy of your belief, you realize that your story isn't stable and you'll consider others' beliefs. Don't forget to practice. When you're not 100% proficient at something, you feel the need to check with others to make sure you're doing it right. While there's absolutely nothing wrong with checking in with others, the best way to improve your own confidence is by practicing it yourself because, after all, confidence comes with competence. The more you practice, the greater your confidence and the less likely you are to look for approval from others. Try to understand why you seek approval. When you understand why it is that you're seeking approval, it's easier to overcome this behavior. Before you reach out to others for approval, ask yourself why you don't trust your own opinion on the matter. You may find that you're seeking approval because you're unsure about something, or maybe it's because you want someone else to like or accept you. Conclusion Seeking out the approval of others is part of the human condition. We all do it, at least from time to time. There are several reasons why we might be doing this. The primary one being that we don't have the confidence in ourselves. However, with these five tips, you can learn to stop trying to look for approval from others and live your best life. 7 Tips for Using Social Media as a Weirdo If you're running a business stroke brand page on social media and you're concerned about its growth, stop worrying. There are billions of people who are active on social media, which means this is the best place to increase awareness and exposure of your brand or business, as long as you're using proper social media strategies. In this tutorial, we'll explain seven tips for using social media as a weirdo to increase awareness and exposure of your brand. 
Whether you're launching a new brand or running a new business on social media, the best place to get started is with SMART goals. This acronym stands for Simple, Measurable, Achievable, Realistic, Time Bound. If your goals do not fit within these parameters, you must revisit them. Choose your platform carefully. Another useful tip is to carefully choose your social media platform. Over time, there are new, better platforms being established, which can make it hard to choose. However, choosing the one with the largest population of your target demographic is a great place to start. This will help you increase your follower account on other platforms. Know about target demographic and take appropriate steps. Once you've set your SMART goals and you've chosen your platform, you want to consider your target demographic and get all the information you can about them. This is who will determine whether your brand or business is successful. Pay close attention to the posts that they engage with and the content they're interested in, as well as the platform where they are most active. This will help you find out a lot so that you can create more engaging content and therefore increase your visitor and follower count. Increase follower count with a winning game plan. Research has proven that when you create stroke follow strategies for your social media platforms, you're more likely to be successful than those that do not. Therefore, you must take the time to learn and implement as many social media strategies as you can come up with to make your dreams come true. Here are a few things to consider. Highlight upcoming events stroke festivals. Create custom hashtags for your posts. Follow a theme and make it interesting for your audience. Make sure your audience is engaged on your campaigns, trends and features. Utilize helpful tools on social media platforms. One of the ways you can grow on social media platforms is to use the tools that are available to you. As mentioned previously, pay attention to the actions and behaviors of your target audience. Of course, it's not always feasible to stay up all night to wait until your followers are online. Therefore, use a contact scheduler so that your content can be posted at the time you choose without you having to lose sleep. Use the storytelling method. Research has shown that one of the most effective ways to spur people to act on something is through storytelling. People believe in stories stroke experiences that are packed with emotion, which will increase your brand awareness, which also makes your brand grow. Additionally, storytelling builds an emotional attachment, which helps your audience relate to your stories. Implement emote icons. Emote icons are a great way to increase engagement on your content and deliver the appropriate meaning to your audience. People are able to understand the tone, direction and nature of your content. In the world of social media, plain text looks boring. Conclusion These tips may seem a bit on the simple side, but they are highly effective for helping you learn to use social media as a weirdo. Sure, you'll have to put some time and effort into them, but there's nothing in the world that comes easy. The results that you achieve will be completely worth it in the long run. 10 Inspirational Quotes for and by Weird People Unfortunately, weirdness, or uniqueness, is something that most people in the world simply don't know how to appreciate. Most people are more comfortable around conventional or normal people. After all, this seems to be the much safer choice. However, eccentricity is often synonymous with authenticity and a strong sense of self-confidence. Often, we hide the best parts of ourselves because we're afraid that others are going to reject or misunderstand us. After all, it's happened, either to us or to people that we know, and sometimes at a very young age. Part of the human condition is the desire to be liked and to conform to the box we're supposed to be in. At some point, there comes a time when we realize that we don't want people to like us for something or someone we're not. This is the point where you learn to embrace your weirdness and learn to appreciate your unique self, flaws and all. In this presentation, we'll provide you with 10 inspiration quotes for and by weird people that will encourage you to be yourself, no matter how weird you may seem to others. In nature, nothing is perfect. 
Trees can be contorted, bent in weird ways, and they're still beautiful. Alice Walker Be weird, be random, be who you are, because you never know who would love the person you hide. Unknown There's no such thing as a weird human being. It's just that some people require more understanding than others. Tom Robbins I'd rather be weird and happy than normal and miserable. Suzanne Colasanti I don't see myself as weird. I just see myself as honest. Tori Amos I like weird people. The black sheep, the odd ducks, the rejects, the eccentrics, the loners, the lost and forgotten. More often than not, these people have the most beautiful souls. Unknown I am convinced that the only people worthy of consideration in this world are the unusual ones, for the common folks are like the leaves of a tree and live and die unnoticed. L. Frank Baum I think everyone's weird. We should all celebrate our individuality and not be embarrassed or ashamed of it. Johnny Depp All forms of madness, bizarre habits, awkwardness in society, general clumsiness are justified in the person who creates good art. Roman Payne Blessed are the weird people, poets, misfits, writers, mystics, painters, troubadours, for they teach us to see the world through different eyes. Jacob Nordby Conclusion You must learn to embrace your weirdness. Sure, not everyone is going to fall in love with who you are, and that's perfectly okay. Not everyone has to like you. The only thing that matters is that you learn to like yourself and be true to yourself. Don't ever let anyone get you down. Debunking five common myths about weirdness. There are five self beliefs that have an impact on your performance. If you ever find yourself thinking or believing any of these, be careful. On the other hand, if you do hold any of these beliefs, you can be optimistic because beliefs can be changed. In this presentation, we're going to debunk five common myths about weirdness. This will help you become aware of what needs to change and understand how your behavior is influenced by your motives. Success is determined by how you compare with others. When it comes to our personal and professional agendas, we all set our own standards of excellence. We compare ourselves to our past achievements. We compare ourselves to objective standards. We compare ourselves to other people. These comparison points determine our goals. I cannot obtain happiness. Many people believe that their weirdness will keep them from obtaining happiness, no matter what they're trying to do. They believe that they're just as likely to find a unicorn in the White House. However, it is possible to achieve happiness. Here's what you must do. Figure out your values. Understand that attaining certain goals isn't the answer. I'm not in control of the world. According to Carol Dweck, a psychologist, we have one of two primary viewpoints that affect how we interact with the world. We believe that, we can change and grow with personal effort, or we are at the mercy of the world, unable to influence our own destiny. My skill stroke ability is extraordinary. A survey from 2018 indicated that 73% of nearly 3,000 college-educated Americans believed that they were above average intelligence. Unfortunately, skill inflation is a major issue in the workplace. A college graduate will show up for a job thinking they can do it when, in reality, they're not even close to being prepared. In addition to derailing your career, overconfidence in your skills makes you seem hopeless because you have no clue that your performance is subpar. When you're in a professional environment, you may have a hard time recognizing the obvious and instead of trying to improve, you just keep looking for validation for your own beliefs while ignoring information that conflicts them. It's my motivational type. As humans, we have a voracious desire to try to find the reason for certain behaviours, outcomes and events. If something doesn't work out right, we want to know who caused it and why it happened. If something does work out perfectly, we snatch up credit and then try to find out how and why it was a successful outcome so that it can be repeated in the future. We also enjoy not expending cognitive effort when we can. Why should we think stroke reason if it's possible to generalise? This pattern of seeking causes an event, and also resting our brain causes us to label others based on certain characteristics and traits. 
we use labels to justify our identities and behaviours. Labelling ourselves and others becomes an issue that leads to inaccurately branding others for several reasons. For example, though some consultant stroke authors would like you to believe it, there is actually no such thing as fixed motivation. Though you might exhibit some dominant motivations, your behaviours actually change with the situation. When we generalise, we assume that everyone that falls under that certain label have the same motivations. They really don't. Sometimes a person is labelled and they act the way they are labelled because that's what they think is expected. Conclusion If you find that you have any of these weird thoughts or behaviours, don't stress too much over it. The truth is, when you become aware of it and decide that you want to change, you'll be able to. Hopefully, this has helped you to debunk five common myths about weirdness. How to foster creativity one day at a time Looking back through human history, you can see that value has been placed on creativity. Some have even referred to it as the skill of the future. Perhaps this is because creativity helps individuals adapt to uncertainties and solve issues as they come up. Some research suggests that creativity is a more accurate predictor of extended lifespan than intelligence or openness to experience. In this tutorial, we'll teach you how to foster creativity one day at a time. Steps to Fostering Creativity Daily Here are eight steps to fostering creativity in your daily life. Make a plan. The very first step to fostering creativity is to work on your craft. While this may seem obvious, the truth is many of us forget that in order to be successful, we must work hard and practice. We can't just sit still doing the same thing every day and expect to see improvement. In order to grow, we must consistently water our soil. One way to do this is to make a plan. Set aside time on a daily basis to work on specific things. Additionally, set goals for yourself. Creating a plan instills commitment. Giving yourself deadlines helps you to manage and track your progress. Most of all, this will keep you accountable. Carry a journal. In some cases, you may feel like you're running around with no time to foster your creativity. However, don't let this limit you. Keep a journal with you at all times. This way, you can pull it out and jot down ideas as they come up. This will help you spark your creativity when you have time to work on it. Establish a notes section on your phone or computer. If you're like most people, you use your phone and or your computer to check your messages, answer emails, check social media, interact with clients, surf the internet and more. One of the best and most convenient ways to record your ideas is to use a notes app on your phone or computer. Unplug. Instead of mindlessly surfing the internet, binge watching a favourite show on Netflix or scrolling through social media, spend that time being creative. If you'll use this time one to two days a week, you'll find that you actually do have more time to be creative. Work on something different. Sometimes you may get stuck in a rut and the best way to get out of that rut is to find something new and different to work on. When you set aside time to pursue something different than your normal creative activities, you may surprise yourself, open up new ideas or processes and maybe even feel more inspired to get back to what you're familiar with. Wake up early. Believe it or not, waking up just 30 minutes early can change your entire day. This will actually help you have way more time than you usually do. Plus, you'll begin the day by getting your creative work taken care of. This helps eliminate any stress you have trying to get it done at the end of the day when you're exhausted or uninspired. Taking care of creative work early in the day will help you start in a more positive way. When you make waking up early part of your routine, creativity will feel like a normal part of the day instead of an obligation. Create an inspirational space. If you find something that inspires you, email the link to yourself or pin it to your Pinterest board or bookmark it. This will ensure that you don't forget about it and you can find it again in the future. Plus, it will give you a list of inspirational content in the future when you find yourself stuck. Embrace the mess. 
The truth is, everything you create is not going to be a headline-worthy piece. However, don't let this get you down. The important thing is practice, not perfection. Embrace the mess and understand that success is an ongoing process. Enjoy the process, even the mistakes, and let yourself grow. Conclusion: There has always been value placed on creativity. However, in our day-to-day lives, we often get busy and forget to take time to be creative. These tips can help you foster creativity on a daily basis. Weird people lead people. One of the biggest things that leaders struggle with is learning to embrace their weirdness. But if you don't learn how to do this, you're going to miss out on one of the easiest ways to strengthen your team and create a wonderful company culture. When you're trying to build weirdness into your team, the ultimate goal is to develop a company that's 100% authentic. When you are a leader, there are many benefits of letting your weirdness show around your employees. In this presentation, we'll explain some of the benefits of weird people leading people. Three benefits of being a weird leader: Many people believe that as a leader, they have to display professionalism at all times. But the truth is, it's perfectly acceptable and even encouraged to be weird. Here are three benefits: You encourage employees to be themselves. When you're building your team, you may find that some of your new hires are nervous about meeting everyone. The best way to get them to open up is to share an embarrassing story about yourself during a company-wide meeting. This will make them laugh, which will help them relax and let their guard down. When they see that their leader is down to earth, they are more likely to be themselves. Unfortunately, many times leaders believe they must be stern and display themselves as the picture of perfection, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They believe that this is the best way to get respect. However, the truth is, this is one of the worst things you can do as a leader. You must be able to be honest with your team about your weaknesses, because this is the best way to improve your own credibility and get them to respect you. There's no one that wants to work for a leader that seems fake. After all, you wouldn't want your employees to be fake, would you? If you embrace your weirdness and start being open about it around your employees, they will too. Before you know it. Everyone will be acting like themselves, and the office environment will be much more fun. The company will become innovative. You know that it can be difficult to get all of your team members to where they can speak up when they have an idea. However, sometimes that's where the best ideas come from. And if you, as the leader, will start to voice some unconventional ideas in company meetings, you may find that everyone else will start to chime in with their own ideas. In some cases, you may find that it's fun to throw out an idea that you know the team is going to veto. This will indicate to the team that their ideas can't be that strange or bad, and encourage them to speak up more often. Since you're the leader, your team members will feel good about themselves when their idea is voted in over yours. Sure, it means that you lose the spotlight for a moment, but it builds the confidence of your team members, and they'll start innovating without your encouragement. You'll make better hiring decisions. Once the team members start to let their inner weirdness show, it will begin to rub off on those that you interview. When an interviewee comes in, they'll see what it will be like to work at your company. They'll see that everyone in the office is quirky and proud to let it show. In some cases, you may have interviewees that are not looking for that type of environment. You don't want those people anyway. Start the interview by having a few fun and unique questions. Then gradually ease them into the weirdness by inviting them to a company social. At the social, be authentic and share some embarrassing stories about yourself. When this is over, you and the applicant will know whether or not they're a good fit. Conclusion: Leaders tend to struggle with letting their weirdness show, or, as some people put it, letting their freak flag fly. However, the truth is. A little weirdness or a few quirks can't be a bad thing. After all, when you show your weirdness, you'll find that employees feel free to be themselves, will learn to be more innovative, and you'll make better hiring decisions.